हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे हरे ओटीस आप सबका स्वागत है आप सबका अभिनंदन है आज हम लोग श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर फोर द प्रोसेस ऑफ क्रिएशन से स्टडी करेंगे एंड इसमें फाइव अमेजिंग लेसन है विल बी कवरिंग दोस प्लीज ज्वाइन अस फॉर जय राधा माधव प्रेयर्स हरे कृष्णा हरे 
हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज डियर व्यूअर्स आप सबका अभिनंदन है आप सबका स्वागत है इन टूडेज श्रीमद भागवतम कैंट टू टीचिंग्स बाय हिज ग्रेस जीव तत्वदास प्रभु जी प्रभु जी हर बार श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास में चैप्टर लेवल पे पूरी टीचिंग्स हम सबके सामने प्रेजेंट करते हैं कौन से इम्पॉर्टेंट लेसन्स हैं कृष्ण कथा में पास टाइम्स में श्रीमद भागवतम से और आज का जो चैप्टर है चैप्टर फोर इसमें हम देखेंगे कि किस तरह से भगवान की जो ब्लेसिंग्स होती हैं दे गेट शॉवर्ड अपॉन द डिवोटीज थ्रू डिसाइपलिक सक्सेशन थ्रू द मर्सी ऑफ हिज प्योर डिवोटीज हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी प्लीज कंटिन्यू हरे कृष्णा प्लीज ज्वाइन अस फॉर मंगला चरण प्रेयर्स टुगेदर ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चैवा नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीये श्रोता स्वकथा कृष्ण पुण्य श्रवण कीर्तन हृदय तस्तोह्य भद्राणी विधुनोति सुहसता नष्ट प्रायेश भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवते नैष्टिके Hey Krishna dear devotees please join us in the recitation of the first verse and its translation from Shrimad Bhagavatam second canto chapter 4 the process of creation Suta uvacha vai asake niti vachas tatva nischayam atmanah upadharyam tim krishne Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedan Swami, Shila Prabhupada. Sutta Goswami said, Maharaj Parikshit, the son of Uttara, after hearing the speeches of Shukdev Goswami, which were all about the truth of the self, applied his concentration fearfully upon Lord Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please join us for Guru Pranati. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashat Deshitarine Om Adhyana Tirandasya Gyan Jana Shalakaya चक्षुन मिलत तस्म श्री गुरव नम मुखम कौती वाचाल पंगुम लंघयते गिरी यहां वंदे श्री गुरु दीनतालम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा जय जी आप सबका स्वागत है अभिनंदन है हरे कृष्णा हरि बोल वी वुड लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल द व्यूअर्स सोनू रॉय जी हरे कृष्णा अरण्य चक्रवर्ती प्रीतम श्रीवास्तव जी अर्चित कुलकर्णी करुणा सिंधु प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा जय परमार सुजय हलदर आप सभी का स्वागत है इन श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न वंडरफुल लेसन अबाउट हाउ वी कैन रिसीव मर्सी एंड ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ भगवान थ्रू द प्योर डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड देर आर मैनी वंडरफुल लेसन इन दिस चैप्टर फोर ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू क्रांति राजू जी हरे कृष्णा मंजुला देवी राहुल साहा जी हरे कृष्णा सीमा मिश्रा शैलेन्द्र नाथ राज राज जी राकेश शर्मा जी हरि बोल विजय कुमार जी दावो छेदी जी सुप्रभा मैती विकास सिंह हमारी जो ये श्रीमद भागवतम की क्लास है ये जब अबाउट वन आवर में एंड होगी फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स टू वन आवर में उसके बाद क्वेश्चन आंसर्स का सेशन होगा तो आपके जो भी क्वेश्चंस हैं आप कमेंट्स में उस वक्त लिख लिख दीजिए आई विल रीड दैम टू प्रभु जी क्योंकि 
उससे पहले अगर आप बीच में जो भी क्वेश्चंस लिखेंगे वो स्क्रॉल कर जाएंगे और मिस हो जाएंगे इस वक्त इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड टाइम के हिसाब से वी हैव सिक्स पी एम टाइम सो अराउंड सिक्स फोर्टी फाइव पी एम इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड टाइम पर आप अपने क्वेश्चंस लिखना शुरू कर सकते हैं आई विल पुट ए नोट ऑल्सो देर और उसके बाद यू नो यू विल गेट योर आंसर्स बेस्ड ऑन द टीचिंग्स वी लर्न फ्रॉम प्रभु जी फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा डे जी वो टीस सुना गोस्वामी इज डिस्क्राइबिंग टू हू टू द ग्रेट सेजेस हुआ गैदर एट नामेश्वरनिया सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू लुक एट द व्हाट इज दैट सीन सो सुता गोस्वामी इज एट नामेश्वरनिया एंड ही हैज हर्ड द होल ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम फ्रॉम श्रीमद् गोस्वामी एंड ही इज रिसाइडिंग द भागवतम सो प्रभु जी जो इस वक्त पिक्चर दिखा रहे हैं श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टू की बुक में दी हुई है ये सेटिंग नैम शरण्य आश्रम की है यहाँ पे सारे सेजेस बैठे हैं जो श्रीमद् भागवतम का श्रवण कर रहे हैं सुत गोस्वामी जी उनके स्पोक्स पर्सन है उनको श्रीमद् भागवतम की नॉलेज दे रहे हैं Parishin Maharaj heard Shrimad Bhagavatam from Shukdev Goswami. So, ये जो पिक्चर इस वक्त दिखा रहे हैं इसमें जो ब्लू बॉडी पर्सनैलिटी है वो सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी हैं व्यास आसन पर और उनके सामने परीक्षित महाराज जी बैठे हुए हैं जो अपने लाइफ के लास्ट सेवन डेज में उन्होंने एंटायर सेवन डेज में श्रीमद भागवतम का श्रवण किया था एवरी सिंगल मोमेंट और उस हियरिंग के कारण और सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी की चैंटिंग के कारण परीक्षित महाराज अटेंड परफेक्शन ऑफ हिस्स लाइफ हरे कृष्णा सो इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर सुत गोस्वामी आल्सो प्रेस्ड सुखदेव गोस्वामी ही एक्सेप्ट्स सुखदेव गोस्वामी एज हिज इंस्ट्रक्टिव स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर यू नो जो उपदेश मिला उसे इंस्ट्रक्शंस बाय हियरिंग श्रीमद् भागवतम एंड ही आल्सो कॉल्ड हिम अ पोएट सो समटाइम्स दिस आह Interesting topic comes, and this is from you know perspective that some people say some people are Goshta Nandi, some people are Kirtana Nandi, but in reality, when we are reciting and we are studying Shrimad Bhagavatam, we are all Kirtana Nandi. It's not that Kirtan only means that you are doing uh, singing the song, right, or just playing instrument while singing the song. Every time we are glorifying Lord Krishna, so we. Glorification is also called Kirti. Kirtan is glorifying the Lord Shiv in choicest words, and Sutta Goswami is reciting these choicest words. These are enlightening verses which have been attested so by who? Shukde Goswami himself. Now Sutta Goswami, in the very first verse, is very nicely identifying. He is indirectly calling this personality. So first he is saying. Vyasake, the son of Vyasake, Shukdev Goswami, right? So who is Vyasake? The son of Vyasake, and that is none other than Shukdev Goswami. Then he is also calling Parishmaj Uttareya. So who is Uttareya? Who is? What does Uttareya means? Son of Uttara, right? So who is son of Uttara? Parishit Maharaj. He is the son of Uttara, and even you know when he is talking about. Lord Krishna he is saying that the concentration of mind unto who unto Lord Krishna so this is very important and tatva nischaya so which verifies the truth so when shukde goswami was so speaking to parishit maharaj that immediately parishit maharaj went into that meditation that concentration of remembering lord shri krishna so what was be the topic that shukde goswami spoke That touched the very heart of Parikshit Maharaj. This was none other than pure devotional service, right? Uttam bhakti. So that is the essence. Anya bilashita shunyam gyan karma gyanavritam anukule na Krishna anushilam bhaktir uttama. So what is the definition of pure devotional service? Anya bilashita shunyam. It is not anya bilasha shunyam. Understand the difference. Anya bilasha. If somebody says that means one has no desire, right? Whatsoever for you know sense gratification. But the word anya bilashita has been identified 
than this verse because it's saying that when the devotees are feeling danger to their lives, then they take shelter of Lord Shri Krishna. They call up to Lord Shri Krishna, Oh my dear Lord, please save us. So that is very important. You understand? So again, this is where Anya Bilashet, Anya Bilashita has been said. And Shunya means not having desire for sense and enjoyment, but all desires because the nature of the soul is to constantly have desire, right? That is, you know, a symptom. The consciousness is a symptom. So then having constant desire is a symptom. So sometimes people say, I'm not going to have any desire. That they are saying is not having any desire for sense gratification. But the constant desire, which is a propensity of the Atma Jiva, right? Us. So that you cannot stop. That is a nature. That's the very nature. Just like mind, it accepts and rejects all the time. That's the nature of the mind. Yeah. Intelligence is questions and analyzes everything. That's the nature of the intelligence. And similarly, you know, when we become conditioned by this body and we think ourselves as the, uh, you know, this body, that is false ego. And the false ego is protected by intelligence thinking because intelligence is thinking oh i'm this body so i have to protect the body but a devotee is more careful about the fall down in devotional service so anyabhilashita more refers to that particular perspective that my dear lord i'm carrying out your devotional service i have this wonderful opportunity to get this real human form of life and if this is my devotional service is hampered then I have to go through the whole cycle of birth, death, old age, disease to again be able to come to this level. So please save me because I am very much situated. I'm surrendered to the industry. Now this Anya Shita, we understand that, okay, it is having desire to only satisfy Lord, but it should not be covered by two important factors. Now, what are the two important factors that it should not be covered? If you understand, okay, there should not be any material desire. Right? We should not be seeking sense gratification, sense enjoyment. We should not be putting our senses in the center, but we should be putting Lord Krishna in the center. And so we are serving Lord Shri Krishna, but should not be covered by two other aspects. So, uh, Bhakti Lata Beach, when we covered that particular class last time, we also talked about that they are these unwanted creepers. They grow right beside the Bhakti Lata, the creeper of devotional service. So what are these creepers? These are jnan, right? You know, the monistic speculative knowledge that we are trying to, you know, sometimes seeking. So that's where sometimes people became, become professional reciters of Bhagavatam. And they are using it to maintain their livelihood. And they are speculating all over Bhagavatam. And uh, his, uh, again, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he clearly identified that we should not hear from Mayavadi. Why? Because that is, he gives the example that if you feed milk to a snake and the snake tastes the milk, the milk becomes poisonous. So even though milk is pure, but with the touch of a snake, the tongue of a snake, <coughs> it becomes poisonous. Similarly, when we hear Srimad Bhagavatam from a professional reciter, who's carrying out his livelihood by reciting Srimad Bhagavatam and also using various speculative ways to describe Srimad Bhagavatam. That is the poison, right? This is the speculative propensity. That is the poison. So the whole, you know, milk becomes poisonous. So it doesn't mean that milk which is pure is bad, that it can become. It is important that Srimad Bhagavatam is Amalpura. It is faultless literature. It is literary incarnation of Lord Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam is literary incarnation. But a professional reciter or a Mayavadi can present it in a manner that our intelligence can get polluted. And the message that we are getting is not really reaching to the core of our heart so that we automatically get that spontaneous feeling of engaging in devotional study. So that is an essential aspect being identified. Now Shivdev Goswami is a self-realized soul. He learned Srimad Bhagavatam from whom? Whom did he learn Srimad Bhagavatam from? From his own father, Srila Vyaste, Krishna Dwaratanya Vyaste. And so he is reciting as it is, 
and he is using his realizations to explain it further for the understanding of Maharaj Parikshit. So it is very important for us to understand that when Mahakrishna's mercy comes, it comes through his devotee who explain the message of Lord Krishna as it is. That's why when Srila Prabhupada, he translated Bhagavad Gita, he named it Bhagavad Gita as it is, as Lord Krishna intended the message to be expressed. And in his transcendental purpose, Srila Prabhupada explains the meaning of each verse going into depth, right? Like the kind of activities Lord Krishna in the verse is saying, you know, one should understand the three kinds of activities. He doesn't explain. So, Srila Prabhupada identifies that Lord Krishna is talking about karma, vikarma and akarma. If you did not get those purpose, you would not be able to understand what Lord Krishna is saying. Because Srila Prabhupada is helping us who are mand buddhi, right? We don't have so much intelligence, but we are taking shelter of him as a preeminent instructor, you know, spiritual master. So we get these instructions and it's like, oh wow, we didn't know that then. These are the three types of karmas Lord Krishna is talking about. Pious activities, sinful activities and devotional service, a karma. A karma doesn't mean don't do any activity. It is more active than any of those two activities, which is constantly kirtaniya sadahari. That we have to constantly glorify Lord Shri Krishna sarvatra sarvada. At all places, in all circumstances, at all times. Now this is a very important aspect. Because when Sutta Goswami is glorifying Shukdev Goswami, who is reciting Srimad Bhagavatam to Parikshit Maharaj and having identified pure devotional service to Parikshit Maharaj, what is pure devotional service? We should not be covered by this speculative knowledge, Jnan and Karma Adi, right? Or should also not be covered by the fruitive work, right? By engagement just to sustain the body and engage in eat, sleep, mate, defend with that purpose. Or sometimes even from the purpose of, you know, dharm, earth, uh, kama, moksha, right? Religiosity, dharm, earth is economic development, kama is, you know, enjoyment, sensual pleasure, and then moksha is liberation from this material world. Even those aspects look very dull in the presence of pure devotional service. So should not be covered by that. Adi means various other yogic processes, speculative processes. Why spend time in trying to do something and then come to God realization when you can directly engage in devotional service, which is so simple to engage in. Just you can close your eyes. Imagine the lotus of your heart a beautiful golden throne bedecked with jewels and you're welcoming Lord Shri Krishna and those nice silken, you know, plush seats of this throne to sit him and you wash his feet with sanctified water from Ganges, from Yamuna. All you have to do is close your eyes and imagine as how you are washing his feet, how you are getting the mercy of touching his feet, how you are praying out to the Lord Shri Calling out for more devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And right beside him, you have Radha Rani, our mother, and you are washing her feet too. And then you are nicely, you know, welcoming the Lord in your heart and glorifying him. So this is where, just by closing our eyes, this is a bona fide process that we can take to. As we have discussed again and again in the past, Srila Prabhupada explains this. There is a very nice story comes that once there was a sage and he was having a stomachache. So his uh, you know, students, his disciples, they were like, Oh, our spiritual master, he's having a stomachache. Please, let's go and get the Vaidya, right? the doctor, the village doctor. They went and got the village doctor and the village doctor came and examined him. And he said, so what is the condition? The Students were saying he has not eaten for many days. And doctor said, but he has, you know, this upset stomach because he just ate rice, kheer, right? So the rice uh, milk, uh, sweet uh, processing. So they were surprised. And then when they asked, they came to know that actually the spiritual master, he was meditating and serving rice, kheer to the Lordship 
and after that he accepted as prasad and when he was eating that's because that's when he got upset stomach there's another example coming you know where you know just to check the temperature when a sage was preparing he in their mind for lord shri krishna and he puts his finger and his finger gets burnt and lord vishnu starts laughing and goddess lakshmi is saying why are you laughing my lord he's like oh this devotee of mine was nicely preparing a nice preparation and he puts his finger and got burnt so this is where even you know the sage was surprised that he was you know meditating the meditation has to be deep yes anybody can meditate but we have to meditate with full concentration without any distraction so we have to get in those modes and not look at the external condition but look at how sweetly we can please lord shri krishna now this is where yes you know the lord in the heart how we please the lord in our heart who is sitting on this plush throne bedecked with gold and jewels and how we are nicely serving him how we are fanning him how we are you know dressing him how we are you know offering him bhogas all those activities that we do for our deities you know we should do it with full concentration with full devotion in a prayerful mood a grateful mood that my dear lord you are so merciful that i didn't deserve this human form of life but by your causeless mercy you have granted me this human form of life knowing which that this is where i can make the right inquiry atato brahma jigyasa and by making this inquiry i can come to you but to come to lord shri krishna so parikshit maharaj he had already seen lord krishna when he was in the womb of his mother uttara so that is the significance why uttara has been identified because he is concentrating on that form of lord shri krishna the four arm form of lord shri krishna when he was in his mother's womb now sometimes people say that okay you know lord krishna has four arm form lord vishnu has four arm form so who are all the personalities in the previous chapter we talked about 24 personalities who these are all vishnu tattvas right these are all swamshas and you know direct expansions and portions of planetary portions of lord shri krishna who are having four arm forms and they have different arrangement of the four paraphernalia gada chakra padma shankha the kanshal shankha you know someone is holding on the right hand the other one is holding on the left hand lower one another one is holding on the you know upper left hand so the position of the kanch uh, shank and you know right? kanch shank and then chakra is sudarshan chakra so someone is holding in a different hand versus the other ones so they have different different positions where the hands in which they are holding these paraphernalia and uh, then there is a uh, padma which is lotus flower and then finally it is kamaduki gada the club so these four paraphernalia items they are holding in different hands but lord krishna he is the avatari right he is the cause of all causes but all other vishnu tattvas expansions are his expansion they are avatar so that's the important aspect so parishit maharaj had seen in his mother's womb and he was not even born when ashwatthama had shot this you know nuclear weapon brahmastra and he was saved from being burned by the fire of brahmastra the fiery energy of brahmastra that was shot by son of dronacharya ashwatthama and lord krishna had saved him at that time that's why his another name was vishnu ra one who is saved by lord vishnu and so he immediately went into concentration from the childhood he had this propensity now here shri aprupa explains that there are two things that are essential for one to get pure devotional service that shri goswami talked in the previous chapter and parikshit maharaj had both of these situations first one was he was able to take birth in the family of devotees right one who is an advanced devotee but has not attained the love of god had he gets the opportunity to get take birth in the family of devotees transcendentalists so parishit maharaj was very fortunate that way 
but that fortune is with respect to the circumstances. It is not that you have taken birth in the family of devotee and automatically you are a devotee, but you have the right environment, you have the right association around you to become Krishna conscious from the very, very early stage. What does Prahlad Maharaj say? What, at what age should you start? You know, engaging in devotional service. If you ask somebody today, you know, people who are not aware of Krishna consciousness, they will say, why to take good bhakti? Why do you become sannyasi parents actually? They become disturbed. There are children, they are becoming sannyasis. What is going on? We should tell them. Prahlad Maharaj says that from the Kaumari age, from a five-year-old age, as soon as one is ready to start studying, one is ready to understand this world, one should engage in devotional service from the very early stage. Now why does he say that? Because that is the true purpose. Even if we have conquered all the qualities and all the you know, facilities of this particular world, but if you have not taken to the devotional service, it is all useless. From Evai Kevalam, all that endeavor will be considered useless if you don't take to the devotional service. So that is an essential aspect that has been as described here. And for that, we should always, again, the association is there. We should take to devotee association. And what is the second factor? The second factor is that one has to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Now, sometimes people say, yes, this is very nice. And that, Prabhuji, it is very nicely described in his call that Srila Prabhupada is a preeminent spiritual master, instructing spiritual master as well as is the founder of the society. So we have a spiritual master. Yes, but as per the scriptures, we must have a living guru, one who is appearing externally and from whom you can ask questions and he can respond to your answers and he can ask you questions as well. A very wonderful example is when we talked about Ratnakar, the hunter, right? When Devashi Nara made him realize that he is committing so much sin and no, none of his family members would share, you know, the sinful reactions that's coming. So he immediately surrendered. So that was intelligence. Even as a hunter, he had the intelligence that what do I do now? That I have committed so much sin and I will be in hellish condition for millions and millions of births. Millions and millions of years. So here, he says you should chant, you should sit and chant the name of Lord Ram, 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 Ram. He couldn't even pronounce Ram. So Devashi Nara saw his difficulty. And as his spiritual master, he said, okay, can you speak Mara? How an amazing. People just think of it as a story, but understand the depth. He's saying, can you speak Mara? So he said, yes, I can speak Mara. Mara, 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 Mara. He said, yes, do that. And sit here, he gave him an identified position and just call out without stopping. You know, just chant. Mara, 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 Mara. He was not even calling Ram, but Mara, when combined in sequence with the next Mara, it becomes Ram, 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 Ram. If you ignore the first Ma and after the last Ra, then it's all Ram, 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 Ram. And he became glorious as Valmiki, sage Valmiki, he wrote Ramayan before the appearance of Lord Ramchandra. Sometimes people also misunderstand. They think that Valmiki was writing Ramayan as Lord Ramchandra was performing past time. No. Ramayan was written before. And then when Lord Ramchandra appears, so it was Krishna who is appearing as Purush, Baryada Purushottam Lord Ramchandra as an actor. So you have to understand that when Lord Ramchandra is feeling bewildered, feeling the loss of his wife, he's showing this, you know, the sadness and the separation, mood of separation, that is an expert acting of Lord Shri Krishna in his actor form as Lord Ramchandra. So that is an essential aspect, Hare Krishna. So here, Parikshit Maharaj in his mother's womb, he is meditating on Lord Shri Krishna. <coughs> So when we don't have any desires, it's not covered by any monistic knowledge or fruitive knowledge or any other speculative method, other kind of yogas, anukulena Krishna, and we are engaging in serving, pleasing Lord Shri Krishna, 
as he desires right here parishan maharaj when he is thinking of lord shri krishna he is thinking of lord shri krishna in a prayerful way right anukulaya krishna anushilana following in the footsteps of acharyas so he receives these instructions from shri dev goswami so he is meditating on lord shri krishna in a favorable form because from the very childhood he was able to you know take to lost devotion service he was always meditating on lord shri krishna that's why his name was parikshit everyone he was meeting he was examining that person from the personality he has seen in his mother's womb so he was always remembering lord shri krishna following the footsteps of acharya bhakti uttama so such devotion services uttama bhakti or pure devotional service So what is the second factor? First factor is devotee association, and if someone is born in the family of devotees, then automatically they are able to get devotee association from the very early stage, even when they are infant, right? As soon as they are born. And second factor is one should take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, a living personality, the one who is outside. By the mercy of Lord Shri Krishna, who is a Chaitanya Guru, right? He is in our heart, the Lord in the heart, as per Mahatma Super Soul. He enables us to meet, right? A living spiritual master, one of our spiritual master, outside us. So he is inside, and then outside is our one of our spiritual master, whose shelter we take. So Parishit Maharaj is so lucky that Lord Krishna, you know. He enabled him to meet Shukdev Goswami when he is about to die in seven days, and so Parikshit Maharaj immediately understanding the focus of life, he immediately takes shelter of Shukdev Goswami, and this is where he is getting amazing instructions. So now, when we talk about instructions, now when we get instructions, there could be a way, you know, anushilana, right? How do you? follow so how do you follow can be in two ways first is anukaran doing as what another person is doing or anusharan doing as another person is instructing so when we are when we serve our spiritual master we don't act like our spiritual master we take shelter of his instructions so this is also very important how do we take shelter is by following their instructions and in this regard there is a wonderful story so there was a vet like animal doctor right so this animal doctor you know he would go from town to town and he wanted an apprentice so he hires an apprentice to carry his tools everywhere he was going and to prepare things timely so that he can you know cure the animals of various kind of diseases so at one time you know on day one apprentice is with him observing what is this doctor doing and he is called out you know on a stable horse stable so again the vet goes with his apprentice to this horse stable and the master of the horses he says that this horse is best you know horse is having a throat pain and so he goes and observes after talking to the master he goes and observes the horse and then he asks his apprentice to give him a mallet you know it's like a hammer with a thick plastic rubber head and he Bangs that mallet onto the throat of this horse, and all of a sudden the swelling goes away, and the horse gets the horse gets up, and immediately you know he is very cheerfully he is weighing or whatever that right, right he is making sound, and the master his uh, you know the client is very happy that his horse is cured, so he rewards this vet very nicely the animal doctor, so. At that point of time, the apprentice says, "Oh, he's making so much, but I'm going not making as much. All I have to do is get a similar mallet, and I, I can, you know, cure all the animals." So what does he do? He is going around, and then the doctor is hearing the animal doctor, his master is hearing that his apprentice has left him, and he is going around killing animals all around the villages, and uh, he's surprised. So he one day apprehends his apprentice. He says, "What are you doing?" You are killing animals, Father. And he said, "No, no, no." The apprentice says, "I am not the one killing them. It is their misfortune that they are not getting cured." He said, "But what are you doing that you are killing them?" He said, "I am doing exactly what I saw you do. It's exactly the same treatment. 
I take this mallet and bang on their you know, throat a couple of times and uh, unfortunately they die. Once again, there's nothing wrong. It's not doing exactly what I saw you do. At that time, a friend is, you know, is scolded. He's told that that was a special case. What had happened was that that horse had eaten a large piece of watermelon, which was stuck in his throat. So after understanding the situation, I understood. So I broke that watermelon from outside by striking right onto the throat where the watermelon was, you know, there and the watermelon broke into small pieces so it was able to go down into the stomach and so there was no more smelly, uh, swelling, there was no more pain in the throat and the horse was cured. Now without understanding the reason if you use this, right, that particular action then it is incomplete knowledge and so of course apprentice was punished for having killed so many animals and posing as a doctor. So we should not try to pose as someone that we are not. We should take to the parampara system. We should take to the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Just like Maharaj Parikshit here himself by his own example shows that he has taken shelter of Shukdev Goswami. Yes, in the parampara, you know, they are initiating spiritual master and they are instructing spiritual masters. And in our parampara many times the linkage has been brought in by instructing spiritual masters. The examples can be given of right there. Uh, Devishi Narad, he never was, you know, he did not perform a home yagya and fire sacrifice to initiate Vyasdev. Vyasdev already had an initiating spiritual master who was his father Parashamuni. Shira, once again, Sage Narad Muni, he was the instructing spiritual master. Similarly, here, Shikdev Goswami didn't say, okay, Maharaj Parikshit, you have taken my shelter, so I'm going to perform a fire sacrifice and initiate you. No. He provided instructions. He recited the whole Srimad Bhagavatam to Parikshit Maharaj. And so, this is the way Parikshit Maharaj was able to get the benediction. But this has to come from a living personality. Yeah, right? Sometimes people still get confused because they say, oh, so Shirpapa's purpose are there. And so I can accept him. Yes, you can accept him based on the purpose because we are getting instruction from Srila Prabhupada. But if you have a doubt, if you have a question, who will you ask? You should have a personality who you can ask those questions. And you can get answers from that personality. And they can be the spiritual masters living and connecting us to the parampara system. So again, in the discipline course, we cover very extensively how and why to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, one who is living, so that we can take shelter. Now again, there is another aspect that comes. That uh, when Srila Prabhupada was there, and his health was not going well, at that time his disciples, they were perplexed a little bit. So they were thinking that after Srila Prabhupada leaves his body, who will be the next, you know, whose shelter can they take? They were trying to inquire who of his, one of his god brothers could be their spiritual master. When Srila Prabhupada heard, it pained him very much. He was really aggrieved to hear that. He said, you don't replace your spiritual master with another personality. You take to my instructions and you carry out my instructions. That is the essence from the scriptures. That you follow the instructions of your spiritual master. Srila Prabhupada, after... His spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj Prabhupada, when he left his body, did not accept someone else to be a spiritual master. He took the instruction, rather the instruction he took was before he was even initiated by his spiritual master. Because at that time itself, in the very first meeting, Srila Prabhupada had accepted Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Swami Maharaj as his spiritual master. So when he heard the instruction that to translate, and the, uh, the books, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam in English, he took that instruction to heart. But not just that, but also the purport behind it. So again, this is where, what is the benefit of taking shelter? So again, in this regard, Sita Goswami is identifying a beautiful word. He is saying, Tirathurandra Pulinda Pulkasha Bheera Shubha Yavanaha Kasha Deyaha Ye annecha papa yadapa shreya shreya 
Shudayanti Tasme Prabhu Vishnavi Namaha. He is saying that Kirat, Huna, Andhra, Pulinda, Pulkasha, Abhira, Shumba, Yavana, members of the Kasha races and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to his being the supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. <clears throat> so here it is very clearly identified. And now sometimes people say, what are these different you know, races being talked about? Right? Kirat is the old Bharat Varsh. And then Huda is part of Germany and Russia. So people living in Germany and Russia at that time. Andhra is the southern province of India. And Shumbha is another province. Yavana are the Turks. <coughs> so again, there are various, uh, when Parshuram, he started, you know, destroying, killing the Kshatriya kings who were not following the Vedic injunction. So these Kshatriya kings, they ran over all over the world. Some of them went to Turkey area. So again, Yavanas, Yavans, they are these Turkish people. And they were also in Vishwapa, in Mahabharata, their prince comes, that be, being induced being you know encouraged by Karna and actually it was his influence on the Turks that all these warriors from Turkey they actually participated in Mahabharat. So from not just the current India, Bharat was sometimes people say Bharat is India now. It is the remaining part of Bharat that is in India. Bharat Varish was the whole planet Earth. So you have to understand and not just the land but also the seas. When Yudhishthi Maharaj he ruled he ruled the land and the sea. So you have to also understand that they are living entities on the sea. So he was ruling in both the areas. So here, all these races who had forgotten the Vedic culture, they were able to take to devotional service of the Lord when they took the shelter of a devotee of the Lord. So that is an amazing lesson that we hear. That at the same time, Parishit Maharaj is going to ask a question, right? So a disciple should ask a question. A disciple, what's the definition? Who is a disciple? The definition of a disciple is a person who is ready to be disciplined. So he is asking Shivdev Goswami. Now Shivdev Goswami could have very well gone to his chapter 10 and start describing Ras Leela and those pastimes of Lord Shri Krishna. But he started with the creation, right? Atra Sarga Visarga. So primary creation and secondary creation. First canto primary creation, second canto. Second creation has been discussed. So here the question is being asked by Parishit Maharaj in that respect. Parishit Maharaj is asking this question. I beg to know from you. Now understand how the question is being asked. It has not been asked. Can you tell me? Why is this happening? What is that? Right? He is not asking like that. He is asking in a humble mode. This is the emperor of the world who has given up the whole world. When he's coming in front of Shivji Goswami and Shivji Goswami, please just like a 16 year old boy. Maharaj Parikshit is in 30s, right? He's about 36 years. So, half, less than half of his age. Yet at the same time, he's asking in a humble mood, knowing that this person may be appearing in a 16 year old body, but he's a self realized soul. He's an exalted Vaishnava. So, he's asking, I beg to know from you how the personality of Godhead by his personal energies, right, creates this phenomenal universes as they are. As we can see them, as we can see this material world around us and which are inconceivable even to the great demigods. So now our great demigods, he is actually making a reference not just to Indra but also to Brahma and Lord Shiva. That how Lord, so Lord does not work. He just works through his energies, right. So his energies are the instrument. That's why Lord Krishna says to Arjun, Nimitra Matam Bhavisavisachi, that you can just be an instrument in my purpose. I've already killed all these personalities gathered on at Kurukshetra with you. But you can just be an instrument and get the glories of having killed them. Because I have all, you can just be an instrument. So we, as Tatastya Shakti, as Majima energy of Lord Shri Krishna, can only be an instrument in his service. So that is an important base to understand. And here, from this example, we also understand that the Vedas are called a Parashaya. Parashaya means 
made by a living entity, right? Of this material world. But the Aparishyam is, it has been imparted by Lord Shri Krishna to Lord Brahma. And this picture at the back of the second canto identifies that Lord Brahma receives the Veda from Lord Shri Krishna. So, yes, it is Amal Puran again, but if it is misunderstood, then the misapplication would cause one to fall down. So, we should understand these literatures, these scriptures from a bona fide spiritual master, from the devotees of the Lord who are appearing in Parampara. So, this is an essential lesson. And the last verse does refer in this chapter that Shuddev Goswami is very pleased that Maharaj Parishya is asking from creation perspective because he wants to understand from his platform moving up. And he's saying that even Brahma, when he was in meditation, Devashi Bharat saw. So he used to think that Lord Brahma is the Supreme Person. So he was not aware that Lord Brahma is not. He is the first living entity of this material universe. He always knew that. He is known as Aja, which means one who does not have a material father or mother. But he did not know how Lord Brahma had taken birth. So at that time, once he saw Lord Brahma in meditation, he said, You are meditating on someone else? I always thought that you are the Supreme One. At that time, Lord Brahma reveals to his own son, right, on this subject that he was impregnated with Vedic knowledge from his very birth. So again, the sage observed his father in meditation, say Devashi Nara, inquired from Lord Brahma, and this is where we'll be picking up the next chapter. So again, here, two important things to be able to get pure devotional service, devotee association from the very early stage so that we can engage. So wherever you are, now is the time to start engaging in devotional service and to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Process is very simple. It simply starts with the chanting of the Holy Name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, viewers. Thank you, Prabhuji, for the wonderful Srimad Bhagavatam class. Prabhuji discussed the lessons at the chapter level from Canto to chapter, chapter 4. Or Isme, we developed the understanding how we can experience mercy of uh, Krishna through the blessings of devotees. And Jinka, ye uh, session miss ho gaya hai at a high level through different questions. I'm sure Prabhuji will address the highlights of this session. So, dear viewers, aap sabhi ka abhinandan hai. Many of you have just now joined and you may have missed the class so uh, doesn't matter still if you have some questions regarding your spiritual life please put them on the comments and i will read them to prabhuji om prakash singh ji radhe krishna indu malhotra paul jagannath rachna gupta hare krishna hari bol dear friends and uh, i'm going to now read out some questions karuna sindhu prabhuji has asked one question Hare I will be reading it out in a moment. Vijay Kumar Kajuji, Hare Krishna, Saradindu Palji, Hare Krishna, Prabha Chaudhary, Jiya Kashyapji, Amrita Subhash, Moshmi Das, Hari Bol, Vinaja R, Hare Krishna, dear friends, Hari Chandar, Vibhu Agrawal, Vishwanath Vishuji. Sabi uh, viewers, apne questions, uh, comments me. Uh, present kar sakte hain and I will read them to Prabhuji and he can answer your questions. Karuna Sindhu ji ka question hai. Why is it, uh, let me just read the exact statement. I am scrolling back for his question. Hare Krishna. Why do we need to take shelter of devotees? To get blessings of Krishna. Jaise ki aapne main highlighted lesson yehi bataya hai. Lekin I think he is trying to understand why can't we just directly worship Krishna and be dependent on his blessings. Why do we need to have devotee association or why is it said that it is through mercy and blessings of devotees we can experience blessings of Krishna. Hare Krishna. So the question is very important. Why should we take shelter of uh devotee of Lord Shri Krishna, bona fide spiritual master. Why should we seek out a bona fide spiritual master? Why should we 
beg for his mercy. Why should we take his shelter? That's a very important question. And what does Lord Krishna talk about in Bhagavad Gita regarding this? He is saying, Tad vidhi praripatena pari prashnena sevaya ubdekshyanti taj jnanam jnani nas tattva darshana. He is identifying tad vidhi. Right? As per the process, please try to understand. Paripratena pariprashnena sevaya. One should serve the spiritual master and inquire from the spiritual master humbly. Right? As requesting in a prayerful mood that please enlighten me. That I do not understand this subject better. How should I understand it properly? Or even if you have wrong understanding, you should not try to say, Oh, okay, I understand it. When wrong understanding is still wrong, right? So we should always, you know, reveal our mind. That is this what we are understanding is correct? Then the spiritual master can correct us. That he can under, um, make us understand that this is, you know, not so and so, rather it is so and so. And so it is very important for us to inquire submissively. And the spiritual master will reveal the truth to us because he has seen the truth. He has realized the truth. He is a tattva dashi. So he has experienced the truth. Tattva means truth. Like dashi is who has seen one. So again, seen the truth. So again, having realized the truth, they can make us understand. So this is a very essential aspect for one to progress in spiritual life and it is said yasya prasada bhagavat prasado yasya prasada nagati kutrapi so again by the mercy of Lord Shri Krishna we get the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and by taking shelter of the bona fide spiritual master we can attain Krishna so the Lord in our heart as Chaitya Guru he gives us an opportunity to see and take shelter. So the opportunity is there. But the freedom has been also given to us, right? So we should not misuse our freedom. We should immediately take that opportunity to take shelter of the bona fide spiritual master and take to devotional service early. Because that's when it really fructifies in the proper way. So it is very important that by the mercy of Guru, we can progress this devotional service. And what is the injunction in the Shastras? Brahma Bhavite Kaun Bhagyavan Jeeva Guru Krishna Prasade Paya Bhakti Lata Bija. By the mercy, means again, we are wandering in this material universe, but some fortunate souls, by the mercy of Lord Krishna's Chaitya Guru in the heart, a super soul in the heart, enables one to come in contact with a bona fide spiritual master. With the devotee association, Sadhu Sangha feels motivated with the association and is able to get shelter. So we should take that shelter without further doubt, without wasting any other moment. And by taking the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, we should take those instructions to our heart and follow those instructions because they are for our purification. So this is an essential aspect. So that we can go back home, back to Godhead by engaging in devotional service. Another interesting example in this particular verse, Guru Krishna Prasadipaya Bhakti Lata Bija, right? So we get the seed of the creeper of devotional service, right? So this is the seed of devotional service. When we sow the seed in our heart, then by the chanting, right? Hearing and chanting of the holy name, the that's the watering process that the seed sprouts and the bhakti lata, the creeper of devotional service, it comes up. So you have to go to our previous class where we elaborately describe what is that process, how the creeper goes and takes shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna where it bears flowers and fruits and the fruit of this is love of God that we get and we are able to fully serve in ecstatic mood and attain the supreme abode. Hare Krishna. So this is identified that without the seed, there is no way we can, you know, grow the creeper. It's, you know, the fanning of the spark in our heart because the devotion service is dormant. So that getting the seed is getting it fanned so that it grows as a creeper. The seed grows into a creeper and further the creeper rests at the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna who is in the spiritual world. So we can spiritualize our life while being in the material world because we are 
in this world but not of this world Hare Krishna hopefully this explains the importance of a bona fide spiritual master by whose mercy we get the Bhakti Lata Beach and engage in devotional service to attain Lord Shri Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna so Prabhuji answered our question why it's important to have uh, you know mercy or the blessings of devotees because um, Krishna's devotee flows through his uh, Krishna's mercy or blessings comes to the devotees and in this process we should take shelter of a genuine guru who trains us, who motivates us, who inspires us to engage in devotional service and Prabhuji has also told us that we have a heart mein dormant Krishna consciousness which is uh, awakened ho jati hai, you know, by the mercy of a guru, by mercy of genuine devotee of the Lord and then by constant hearing and chanting, we can water that seed of devotion in our heart. So this is all very important for the souls, for the living entities who want to come close to Krishna, who want to please Krishna. So Prabhuji, we have next question. New devotees often wonder why um, why Parikshit Maharaj was asking so many questions in last seven days of his life. You know, he was asking all these questions to Shukdev Goswami, jo entire Srimad Bhagavatam hai. Shukdev Goswami ji, Parikshit Maharaj ko Bhagwan ki leelayen bata rahe hai, name, form, activities, pastimes. So, but last seven days mein, he is asking so many questions. So, can you please explain this briefly so it's everyone is benefited from it. So again, uh, when you uh, have to pass an exam, you should know how to answer various questions, right? So when you go and take an exam, right, in the question paper, all these questions being asked. And uh, so Srila Prabhupada actually he describes a very nice scenario. A father asked his son that, how was your paper? He's like, okay. The father was confused. So he said, what do you mean? Did you write anything? He said, no, I didn't write anything. The father asked, why didn't you write anything? He said, well, there were some questions I didn't know the answer. So I couldn't write anything. But then the other questions I already knew the answer. So what's the need of writing it to prove that I know the answer? I know the answer for some of those questions. The father, he scolded his son. The purpose is to test our knowledge, right? Of the questions that we know the answers. So we have various, you know, inquiries in our life. But the spiritual inquiries are the most important so that we can understand. But they are the media. See this propensity of our intelligence to inquire is very important to be analytical at times to be logical at times is very important because it enables us to inquire but then what should we inquire is the main subject matter that we are asking questions yes we have various inquiries but what are what is the focus uh, we should also focus on are we asking the questions for us to appear very smart that we can ask great questions or is it for our improvement we are asking questions or are we trying to test the other person are they knowledgeable enough or is it going to help us in our spiritual advancement is it going to bring clarity to us you know and the people around us because when Srimad Bhagavatam Bhagavad Gita is being read and is being studied nicely at that time the person who's you know preaching who's you know doing the kirtan he is getting blessed and the person who is hearing is getting blessed and the person who is inquiring is getting blessed even more so again inquirer is highly praised from that perspective in the scriptures that the person is asking for self enlightenment that's why we will go to uh, you know pilgrimage to go to Vrindavan, Mathura and other places Mayapur then we go there to interact with the transcendentally so that we inquire from them what is the purpose of this life and inquire about various questions we may have. Why do we take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master? To serve the spiritual master and to inquire from them so that we can understand how to engage properly in devotional service, how to attain the purpose of life, how to attain the goal of life. That is the essential aspect. So when we keep our mind, right, Ekar Kuru Nandana, Lord Krishna says, the one who's resolute in devotion has only one goal, to go back home, back to Godhead, to please Lord Shri Krishna. Hare Krishna, hopefully this answers your question. 
ओके हरिओम सो प्रभु जी ने एक्सप्लेन किया परीक्षित महाराज ने लास्ट सेवन डेज में सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी से इस तरीके के पूरे क्वेश्चंस हुए पूरी श्रीमद् भागवतम हमें अवेलेबल है एंड फ्रॉम दैट वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट परीक्षित महाराज वॉज ए डियर डिवोटी ऑफ द लॉर्ड और ये भगवान की लीलाएं हैं जिसका बेनिफिट आज हम सब को मिल रहा है परीक्षित महाराज वॉन्टेड टू एंगेज इन डिवोशनल सर्विस ऑफ भगवान he wanted to perform his duties in last 7 days of his life to please krishna to serve krishna knowing that you know he accepted whatever was in his fate the curse which he had received so um prabhu ji also explained that we should not just ask any questions we should be interested for our spiritual advancement so in order to please krishna to serve krishna to uh further advance spiritually we should be inquisitive to ask such questions to understand name form leelas of bhagwan and that's what parikshit maharaj did hari yes. krishna so prabhu ji let me quickly check a few more comments by the devotees many of them have recently joined let me welcome them all is waqt shrimad bhagavatam ki class एंड uh, होने वाली है प्रभु जी ने आज कैंटो टू चैप्टर फोर पर ब्यूटीफुल लेसन्स दिए वी डेवलप्ड अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड दिस ब्यूटीफुल यू नो श्रीमद भागवतम लेसन्स कमिंग इन डिसाइपलिक सक्सेशन लाइक सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी एक्सप्लेन इट टू परीक्षित महाराज एंड वी आर ऑल गेटिंग बेनिफिट श्याम लाल सिन्हा जी राधे राधे निशा सिंह हरे कृष्णा संतोष अनेजा हरे कृष्णा रूपा लाल वानी हरे कृष्णा अर्चना सिंह जी ब्रह्मदत्त शर्मा जी हरि बोल नरेश जी आप सबको जो भी क्वेश्चंस हो प्लीज कमेंट्स में लिख दीजिए आई विल रीड देम टू प्रभु जी ही इज आंसरिंग योर क्वेश्चंस प्रभु जी वी हैव मोर क्वेश्चंस डू वी हैव फ्यू मोर मिनट्स ओके लेट मी रीड देम टू यू हरे कृष्णा दीपेंद्र रघुवंशी जी हरि बोल यशोदा तंगा जी प्रकाश हजोंग जी Do you still have sound problem? Because I checked with few others. I think आपके फ़ोन में कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है या फिर लैपटॉप प्लीज़ आप अपना वॉल्यूम बढ़ा के देखिए कहीं आपकी साउंड सेटिंग के कारण आपको लो वॉल्यूम सुनाई दे रहा हो प्रकाश अजोंग जी हरे कृष्णा हरि बोल ओके सो नाउ वी हैव फ्यू मोर क्वेश्चन हेयर so a uh, question was asked by a devotee how a new devotee he says how should we inspire our loved ones to become vegetarian if they are not vegetarian because nowadays people are fascinated with high protein diets to keep fit and they eat meat products for that reason so hum apne loved ones ko vegetarian banne ke liye kaise inspire kar sakte hain hare krishna so again Instead of giving two, I'll give you three solutions. First one is we should pray for them, right? That oh dear Lord, please bless them so that they can take to devotional service. We should purify them because they will start following four regulatory principles, and one of them is no meat eating. Second one is no intoxication. Third one is no gambling. Fourth is no illicit sex. So like them, there they will give up meat eating and all the abominable things. Second is. that we should feed them prasad so we should make very nice tasty delicious offerings to the lord shiv so when we offer it to the lord shiv the bhoga offering becomes prasad and then we distribute it with the family members we eat with them so that they understand that this food is so delicious and the third thing is the recent researches which have proven they have proved that this meat eating people they are actually taking more protein in their body and the liver is getting bloated because of so much meat and on top of that the second part of the study is that meat it disintegrates very quickly in the stomach and we don't have short intestines like the carnivorous animals we have you know really long intestines and then in the the small intestine is actually the long one the large intestine from length wise it is large in size because of the width but in reality that's short so in reality we have these long intestines and because of them the meat that people eat it disintegrates and is rotting in the stomach and creating all kind of disease conditions in the stomach so that is bad 
First, they are eating more protein that is that is necessary, and second is they're causing havoc on the body because body is like a machine, right? And if you put junk in the machine, that causes all kind of garbage, causing all kind of disturbances. So body cannot function properly. So that is what is happening. So that is an essential aspect. Rather, in lentils, there's so many like dalay hoti hai, beans hote hai, right? Uh, uh, peas. All these have amazing proteins, and that is sufficient for our body. So a sattvic food is fatty, juicy, and nourishing to the body, and is fit for the human consumption. When meat is for the carnivorous animals, chapter seven. Yes, and in chapter seventeen, Lord Krishna describes the food in the three modes of material nature in Bhagavad Gita. So in Bhagavad Gita, as it is, Lord Krishna describes. The happiness in the three modes, the food in the three modes, action in the three modes, all those aspects, understanding in the three modes. So the food in the three mode, in the mode of goodness, is fatty, juicy, and wholesome and nourishing to the human body. In the mode of passion, it is disease causing because it is, uh, you know, spicy and so. And in the mode of ignorance, it is made of abominable things. It has been prepared more than three hours back. Well, prasad is outside because prasad can be eaten even after a long period because it has been blessed. Prasad means lost mercy. Yet at the same time, in mode of ignorance, in tamogura, the food has been prepared long back. It has pungent smell. It is made of abominable things, and it got the person who is eating it during eating is feeling distressed. And after eating, he's feeling even more distressed. So, from that perspective, we should understand that our consciousness and karma is also affected. So, again, that's the fourth aspect: that our consciousness. We all know that people say we are, you know, we eat, right? So, again, what we eat, that we are. So, again, if we eat good, nourishing food, then we have a healthy body. If we eat. Spicy food, then we have a sick body, and if we eat in the tamogura, the abominable things, then you can understand we have like the body of a horse and dogs. Hare Krishna. Hopefully, this explains. Hare Krishna. So, dear viewers, Prabhu Ji ne abhi explain kia how we can inspire our loved ones or the you know how we explain even to people who take non-veg. You know how we can inspire everyone to be vegetarian to elevate our consciousness. If we are trying to please Krishna, we ourselves do things which, uh, you know, uh, the way we can be in perfect consciousness. And also we want to bring others to that platform. We want others to be also uh, in Krishna consciousness so we can help them understand how food can put us in effects of the three modes of nature. Like Prabhuji explained, the teachings are given in Bhagavad Gita chapter 17. And so what we eat affects our consciousness or also usme karma bhi aate hain. Agar aap meat khate hain is life mein, in future you will be born as that particular animal uh, jiske killing mein aapne support kiya by eating the meat. So we want to avoid all that because we want to get out of this uh, material existence and we want to come closer to Krishna. Thank you Prabhuji. There are few more questions. Dear viewers, agar aapka koi bhi outstanding question hai, please put it in comments. Shishupal Vaishna ji, Hare Krishna, Shiv Chandar ji, Khushbu Kumari, Hari Bol. Uh, Prabhu ji, there is a question. Yes. Can we clear our doubts by any person who is seen to be speaking on religious topics? So, बहुत सारा भीड़ इकट्ठा करके काफी लोग प्रवचन दे रहे होते हैं हम किसी के भी पास जाके अपने डाउट्स भगवान के बारे में भक्ति लाइफ के बारे में क्लियर कर सकते हैं कि इसके लिए कुछ रेकमेंडेशन है कि किससे हमें नॉलेज लेनी चाहिए और किसके पास जाके हमें कृष्ण कथा सुननी चाहिए हरे कृष्णा सो इट इज अगेन एंड अगेन एक्सप्रेस बाय द आचार्यस दैट वी शुड लिसन इट Listen, Lord's glories from his devotees, those who are in the parampara. So there are four parampara systems, right? One is Rudra Sampradaya, Sampradaya means parampara. So again, Sampradaya is the lineage coming from Lord Shiva, Rudra Sampradaya. Second one is Brahma Sampradaya, coming from Lord Brahma. So we are in Brahma Sampradaya. 
And this third sampradaya is from Goddess Lakshmi, and fourth sampradaya is from the Kumar sampradaya, is from Chatur Kumar. So again, Shri sampradaya and Kumar sampradaya. So we should be in one of the sampradayas. Currently, is Khan is appearing in Brahma sampradaya and also Gaudiya Vaishnava sampradaya. Why is it Gaudiya Vaishnava? Because Lord Gauranga Mahaprabhu, right? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he appeared 500 years back. So, you know, he is also in this parampara. So again, we get amazing blessings from him. And just Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are sufficient for God realization. So we should hear this from the devotees. We should hear the translation, you know, read the translated purpose of Srila Prabhupada and try to understand it in a submissive mode. You know, from the devotees, making submissive inquiries for our understanding. That is the way. Otherwise, if we hear from professional, you know, reciters or myologists, we already covered that. That is like, you know, a milk that has been touched by a snake's tongue and becomes poisonous. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Prabhuji ne hume remind karaya hai, hume Krishna katha keval bhagwan ke devotees ke mukse sunni chahiye, jo ki parampara mein hai, disciplic succession mein hai, yehi baad Bhagavan Krishna Bhagavad Gita mein bhi batai hai, aur yehi hum Shrimad Bhagavatam ki classes mein bhi lessons mein seekh rahe hai, Parikshit Maharaj ne Shukdev Goswami ji se puri Bhagavatam sunni, jo ki parampara mein hai. Prabhu ji, one last question we'll quickly take, aur maybe two. Uh, question hai Renu Singh ji ka, yes. how can we change any person's behavior? Ye janna chaati hai ki devotees ko behavior change karne ki koshish karni chahiye ki maybe they can do something to inspire people to have a better behavior. Hare Krishna. Aap naam bata hai? Inka naam hai Renu Singh ji. Hari bol. Renu Singh ji, aapka question bohat important hai. Uh, sometimes we see that a person is behaving in an unfavorable manner, right? The person may not be acting which is benefiting to that person and also not benefiting to anyone who's around them. So instead of identifying what is wrong, we should try to dovetail their behavior into what is right. Let me give an example. We use various electrical you know, appliances, you know, we run them using electricity, right? So definitely all living entities, they have various energies. But how we use that electrical energy is of importance. We can use it to run the fan, but the same energy when dovetail properly, can be used to light a lamp. So if we are in darkness, right? Running the fan won't help. And if we try to say, hey, stop running the fan, stop running the fan, then still it will not solve the problem. Rather, we have to encourage the person to turn the lights on. And that would be beneficial. So what I'm trying to identify is that to change their behavior, First, we have to change our behavior towards them. And people who have dogs as their pets and cats as their pets, they realize this. Because when they go for a drop training, they realize that actually it is their training so that they are trained to interact with you know, another living entity who has the propensity to, be, to behave like a dog. So that is an essential aspect. Even Lord Krishna, he had a couple of dogs as his pets. So we should understand in the right perspective how things are. And so when we are interacting with another living entity, you know, a family member, someone who's very dear to us, then we have to somehow dovetail their energy <coughs> in the way we want them to act. For that, we have to first change our behavior. It's Krishna consciousness is all about changing ourselves so that everything is dovetail in Lord Krishna's service and others feel inspired to take to Lord Krishna's devotional service. And yes, we should pray for them to Lord Shri Krishna and we should feed them prasad in a very happy, smiling and joyful way. And this prasad should be prepared with a lot of love and devotion when offered to Lord Shri Krishna, of course. And so it becomes his mercy and then that prasad has an amazing effect on the persons around us. So hopefully this answers your question. Hare Krishna. So, uh, Renu Singh Ji, uh, Prabhu Ji, I will answer summarize and tell you in a sentence that to help other people with their behavior, 
we can inspire them and we can reach them out with our love by offering them Krishna Prasad and we can keep a happy environment or favorable environment so that they will listen to us and also they can feel inspired looking at our lifestyle, our behavior and that can bring a lot of transformation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna and you can pray for them also. Shishupal ji ka question hai, Prabhu ji, why sometimes we have fear for speaking in public forum and uh, why it has happened? It is sometimes I have inner thighs, what others will think, please explain. I think he feels nervous and you know, not just him, many of us feel that nervousness and fear to do public speaking. And so can you give us a little bit tips what can help from a Krishna conscious perspective? Hare Krishna Shishupalji, this is a very important question and everybody passes through, even they admit or not, everybody passes through that phase, right? When you are doing something in the beginning, when you are trying to learn a bicycle, don't you fall down? Don't you feel very nervous just to kind of like trying to imagine yourself sitting on that seat of the bicycle and putting your feet up above the ground? It becomes like we are out of control. That's exactly the feeling you, people get when they are trying to, in the beginning, trying to speak publicly. So this is a very natural feeling. What is important is to never give up. You should do it, but then also, if you are speaking, when you are speaking about Krishna, then Lord Krishna aspires. So you should know your topic, you should get organized, you should also have someone supporting you, you know, as a mentor, as a coach, so that you have, you feel their support and also you, you know, make sure that you specifically verify, uh, you know, your perspective as to the audience, you should also understand that the audience is there to hear the subject matter. And if you pick up a subject matter from Srimad Bhagavatam, if you pick up a subject matter from Bhagavad Gita, that is highly encouraging. And that enables you a lot from the heart. He gives you the energy to preach. That's why it is very easy process when we take to preaching in Krishna consciousness. And it can help us overcome all these different kind of fears, different kind of nervousness. In reality, that you are feeling nervous, identify that you have the energy. If you are feeling your body parts are shaking, that is that your energy is rising. It's very interesting that when someone is fearful, then their you know pupils they expand, the body starts showing various kind of reactions. And this fearful state, all the changes in the body are exactly the same than the excited. When you're highly excited, then again your pupils, they expand, your body starts having this high adrenaline rush. So all these aspects are similar. All you have to do is channel that energy into the right aspect, which is focusing on the subject matter and addressing the subject matter for the benefit of yourself and for the benefit of others. And when we you know, glorify Lord Krishna, then of course everything becomes transcendental and we can easily overcome these fears because he says, Mahashicha, do not fear, do not have a doubt. Sardhamam Parityaja, Mahamekam Sharanam Vajaya, Aham Tvam Sarva Papirbro, Mokshi Shashmi Mahashicha. So his Lord Krishna's final instruction in Bhagavad Gita is that give up all varieties of religion, just surrender unto me, he's saying. So surrender unto Lord Krishna that he will take away all these sinful reactions so we can channel our energy to the right perspective and we have nothing to worry about after that there is no need for any fear hopefully this answers your question Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Shishupal Ji Prabhu Ji has told you a lot of tips for public speaking which you feel confident feel kare. and some of them I could remember I can repeat them uh, some tips Prabhu Ji gave were we should know the subject well and we should try to speak on topics of Krishna. We should read and try to distribute or share that subject or topic as it is. And we should pray to Bhagwan also because Krishna within our heart, he knows all of our intentions, all of our desires and Bhagwan helps. And there are a few other things, different resources Prabhuji mentioned, which can give you more insight or give you the confidence so that you can overcome the nervousness and you can be a good public speaker. 
and we wish you that you excel in public speaking that we want all the devotees who are listening to krishna katha they should be able to become uh, very good preachers with lot of confidence and faith they can share krishna katha and perform sankirtan because that's the recommended duty uh, you uh, the yagya for these kali age times hari krishna. krishna mohan rao ji uh, so prabhu ji we have run out of time i think so uh, we would like to end the class here please go ahead and tantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jay shila prabhupad ki jay shila bhagavad ki jay anant kaurya vaishnav vind ki jay nitai gopremanande hari hari bol Hare Krishna